So let's yeah, let's pretend like this assume. is a smooth fade out and not just <laughs> cutting <laughs> off. It was just <laughs> click. Get everything back to where we can see you and you can see us. Yes. How's it going, Johnson City? We are back. We are hometown East Tennessee every week. I'm Shannon. I'm Bailey. And we come to you and try to bring you an idea of what's going on around town. But we really try to give you an idea of the context, the, the flavor of Johnson City, if you will. Uh, we're not your all, you know, one-stop event, what's mm -hmm. going on this week <laughs> show, nor do we try to be. If I did, probably wouldn't be very good at it, but <laughs> I know what I like. I know what I want to go do, I wanna, mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm interested in seeing. I know Bailey does, too. Mm -hmm. And so we try to bring you what we think is interesting with... The quick and dirty preparation we do for every episode. With, with stories. Absolutely. We are always full of stories. Again, that's the perspective. We want to we want to give you an idea of what it's like living in Johnson City and what it's been like. Because we've been here all of our lives. As it says on, right down there, right at the bottom of the screen, read it. Mm -hmm. We lived here all, all of our lives and we want to bring you, whoa. Sorry, that was me. I felt a little out of focus there oh. for a second. Sometimes I just <laughs> I go know. out of focus. Just a little indigestion yeah, that makes like, you feel oh, a little... Uh, ever, ever since the heart attack, I just go out of focus occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Verbal's worried. He's like, are you out of focus? And now he's right, he's right here. He's bringing you back oh, down. I do have uh, somewhere... Oh, there it is. Uh, we do... We There was so much demand for it. Uh, we have the second camera up there. Uh, if you want to see the back of my monitor. Yeah. <laughs> and the, just the tops of our Right, heads. just the very tip tops. There. <laughs> it's kind of fun what a great idea what a great idea for a camera uh that's that's just so i can grab it and i tried to stick it out the window but that didn't work well it's yeah. just <laughs> let's just say you should really clean your windows before you plan on putting the camera in well and now it's getting so dark right there's not much really. to see yeah is, you, you know yeah we, we would hear the crash and be able to go to the to the wreck yeah it's right outside the window if it happened but that's usually a little later in the evening yeah <laughs> Yeah, when the lights have started flashing yellow and yeah. people don't know what to do or are too drunk to care. <laughs> it's usually that. And boy, living at this undisclosed location of this particular uh, safe house of the Techno Bohemia mm -hmm. compound, it, it, it rises up all around town in safe houses. Yeah. And uh, then we return to our uh, underground layer. Yeah. But uh, this particular one is at an intersection. It's one of the busiest in town. And late at night, you just hear the bang. And sometimes a screech. Sometimes there's a screech, but... But usually just a big... <laughs> usually it's just a bang. Bang. Yeah. Where someone will clobber into someone else. It's, it's yeah. a... You know, they do what they can, but it's that it's that busy. Hey, there's going to be accident, uh, accidents. Yeah. And <laughs> Verbal's extra needy tonight. He is extra needy. He's wanting extra pet. So well, I, extra scratchings. We don't have... We don't quite have the Verbal Cam. Here, I'll grab the Ooh. Verbal Cam. Now I'm out of focus. Whoa. Oh, that was my fault. Head over. Come here. Put your head over here. He's Look. just he's in full on just pet me mode. That's right. He just wants pets. <laughs> hey, Every over. time Verbal shows up, our our <laughs> ratings go through the roof. <laughs> Every time. Good. <laughs> he's girl. a good puppy. I mean, boy. Good yeah, boy. He's he's That's flexible. He doesn't mind. Yes. Yes. I'll leave that. Over here somewhere, it's kind of useless. Oh, there we go. Oh, actually, that's not, that's not too bad. Maybe we'll just do the show like this from now on. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes it actually look like more of a radio show. Like that's we true. don't know we're talking to a that's camera. True. We're just need to have this up here. So. <laughs> Welcome to Public Radio International. Tonight we're playing <sighs> music from. Sorry. They're <laughs> like, ow, ow, <laughs> ow. Oh, and we'll do, we'll do an ASR. We'll do an ASR video. That's weird. You talk very quietly, and it, and it 
it's supposed to really get people off. I mean, it's a whole genre of the internet. I don't know how much of the of the freaky net you you spend. I mean, but I have a lot of friends and a lot of circles, and ASMRs are I forget what it stands for. I'm sorry, and I don't, I'm not going to look it up because that's not what we're here for. But it's basically people put on their headphones, yeah, and someone whispers to them. Is it supposed to get get them to sleep, or and is it no? Some people. Uh, uh, the whispering oh. creates a tingly, yeah. pleasurable sensation, and what happens happens. I could sort of understand that if someone's actually right there, no, that's you can different. feel their breath. Yeah, and that's it, different. You know the warmth and the. But there are some know. cam girls that make a lot of money. Just, oh. I'm going to cook a baked potato. Well, I could do that. It's, there is your there is your fortune, Bailey. I know. Good Appalachian ASMR. That's it. Who needs writing? <laughs> yeah. When you can just whisper, yeah. I'm putting the cookies in the oven. And people are like, money? That's right. Money? Like, take it. I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> that, okay. do, that never happens. Although I am looking it up later. Yeah, you should. Uh, and, and Oh, boy. Come on, camera. I think that one was my fault. I went out of focus. It's, I, I forgot to lock down our camera. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Sorry to take just a moment. Well, while you're doing that, they can just look at my glorious unicorn <laughs> outfit again. That's a spicy unicorn spicy. with her Tabasco mug. I know. Little known fact, unicorns love Tabasco. Oh, good to know. There we go. Fixed. Totally fixed. Perfect. Nut. It's like, hey, do you remember that time on that one episode? Hmm. And then we would go to a clip show video, but <laughs> we can't do that. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I hope we get there. Just do a clip show. We could do a clip show. Remember that time? Of course, then instead of the the, the you know soft yeah. focus, I would do the mm. lines. You could do both. I have done clip shows before. <laughs> Believe it or not. I right? like the idea of doing a clip show where it's just like all the times we've said fuck or something <laughs> like. We could do that. Yeah. That would be a great fan project if we yeah. had a fan. Well, Maybe if, DJ Ray will do that. If people... Subscribed on Patreon. That's true. And gave us moolah, moolah, moolah. The more moolah we get, the more that we can do. And I'm telling you, the sky is the limit. I know how to do it. If you can help us out with a little Patreon love, you sign up, you pledge a certain any amount of money you want. It starts at a dollar. Mm -hmm. Dollar, you get full access to the Patreon stuff. And uh, every time we release an episode, I, we don't release more than two episodes a week. I try to cap it at that. If I do, it's going to be something super special. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you plenty of time to, to quit your Patreon if you don't want it. But it'll be worth it. But the uh, the uh, Patreon money goes straight into the show. Uh, so far, we've made enough to almost buy a scratch pizza. <gasps> almost. And if you know how much scratch pizzas are. That's right. You know, that that's a pretty good chunk of change right yeah. there. Oh, there's DJ Ray. Hey, DJ Ray. Welcome, DJ Ray. Glad to have you in the chat room. Uh, we are still just kind of <laughs> talking about whatever. Uh, DJ Ray, uh, uh, if he had a Patreon, I would I would join his Patreon uh, because I know that it would have uh, lots of salacious videos that are not uh, mm. good, not proper for human for human consumption. Not human. What what is yeah. it proper for? He has he has eclectic taste. We'll say. But love to, love to see you here, DJ Ray. He'll he'll always say whenever whatever the most ridiculous uh, sexual sounding thing he was. Oh, I've got the video. <laughs> whatever it is, I love working with DJ Ray. Yeah. We we don't have a venue for next year. We we work together at Blue Ridge Roller Girls. Blue Ridge Roller Girls yeah. in Asheville. Uh, they lot they had been at the the Civic Center downtown. Really nice place. Mm -hmm. uh, since I started ten years ago, and now they've lost it. So they're trying to find a new place to go. So DJ and I, DJ Ray and I are without a home. Oh. We're Ronin with our six strings on our backs. I don't know how to play mine, but I'm sure DJ Ray could play you something. You learn when you have time. <laughs> hey, done anything this week? No. I mean, either. <laughs> I've not done a thing. No, I feel like, um, I feel like we're still in that refractory period for Halloween, yeah. and nothing really happens for Thanksgiving unless it's family, right. like, unless you do the turkey trot, but I'm not running anywhere, and so we're kind of, 
Well, we're tomorrow though. Tomorrow's gonna be cool. But let's get let's get to tomorrow Sorry. in a minute. Yeah. That's actually one of the topics for a little oh, bit later. Oh, I see. I see. So we'll we'll combine the two. But yeah, we're doing something cool tomorrow. Uh, I got invited to a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, that's that's cool. It's always that good cool. to have more food. I'm I'm sure. more dietarily challenged than I used mm-hmm. to be. But turkey, low fat. What are you gonna do? I'm all about it. Yeah. I ate at. Oh, what was it? It was a great place in Asheville over the weekend. I always have to talk about where I ate. Uh, Trattoria. It's at uh, Biltmore Estates, where the big Regal Theater is. Mm-hmm. It, uh, if you walk into the Regal, to the left is this Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. It looks really expensive, and it is. But uh, it was a special night. Went in there, ate, and boy, that is the best uh, chicken parmesan I've had. And I don't say that lightly. I love me some chicken parm. Uh, their their sauce is a genuine tomato sauce. Yeah. So they just crush up tomatoes. It's not a, a pasty ragu kind of yeah. thing. It's just a, a, a chunky, delicious yeah. sauce. Boy, it was good. Well, now, I made the other day, um, I need to make some for you. I made this fish dish, and it was basil and tomato. Oh, yeah. And fish, a uh, uh, poached fish. That sounds but awesome. The tomato sauce that you make with it, like you take cherry tomatoes and stew them. Um, they pop and yeah. you know you and I'm gonna make a pizza with that because without the fish it just tastes like a delicious <laughs> pizza sauce that's awesome you know the best and the, people are gonna laugh at me I travel a lot so I'm not just saying this is local the best marinara I ever had was mm-hmm. right here in Johnson City mm-hmm. it was um, before there was a crazy tomato this mm-hmm. is the the mid 90s Vito's had an Italian restaurant on Vito's. Walnut Street where uh, it was eventually Kahoot Nanny's in the Quonset mm-hmm. Hut. And his his uh, marinara sauce was almost like salsa. I mean, it was just chunks of tomato, chunks of garlic, and chunks of uh, herbs, which mm-hmm. I'd never had it like this before. But yeah. everything you put it on was so flavorful. It, you could taste each individual ingredient like a good sauce should be. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it's been a long time since Vito's... Although, left town. I will say, we've never spoken about Crazy Tomato. That's true. We haven't brought up Crazy Tomato. And but partially because I never eat there because I forget about it. It's but easy. But they are my favorite. They make my favorite uh, stromboli. Oh, yeah. Which which one? The Crazy Mexican. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. It's like it's basically just like a pepperoni, marinara, um, might be feta cheese in it or something yeah. and jalapenos oh that's and awesome it's so good <laughs> they're great i mean when they first opened up i was i was working at etsu mm-hmm. on walnut street they opened up in the quonset hut and i could walk to yeah a, I, i'm not a big italian food fan because i'm lactose intolerant and usually that Hard just means to. tons <laughs> of cheese but they would just make a really good marinara mm-hmm. uh pasta pasta was homemade and then they closed it and moved uptown, and mm-hmm. I'm sorry, ever since they moved uptown, about once a year I'll go, I haven't been to yeah. the Crazy Tomato in forever, and I'll go have a great lunch, great dinner, Yeah, well, and yeah. I won't think of it again. It's on a road that I never go down. Yeah. Um, and even still, it's in a weird, not a weird location, but it's in a... You can't see it from the road, that's You can't sure. see it from the road. You basically have to be passing it, yeah. and you go... Oh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> and hopefully you're not going somewhere else so you can right, stop. Right, exactly. Yeah. Or it's not the middle of the day. Or yeah, well, it's guess. a it's yeah. a great place. It, it is, is a place that I should eat at a lot more. Uh, and and I, now, lactose intolerance is a fickle mistress. I've, you can build up your tolerance. Or yeah. I can build up my tolerance until I get the flu. I haven't had the flu. Knock on all the wood I can find in a long time. So I've, my tolerance, I can eat mm-hmm. a pizza without getting sick these days. So. I've been hitting up the Italian restaurants like nobody's business oh. lately. I still have to take it easy on the cheese for other reasons, but nom, nom, nom. I've been really digging into some Italian food. Now, have you had your flu shot? I have not, and I'm going to get it. I just, uh, every time I'm every time at the drugstore, there is a line, yeah. and I just, I've already waited, odds are I've already waited at the drugstore forever, and I just can't wait again to get the shot. That's fair. But I gotta go to the doctor soon. I'm, I'm, I am gonna yeah. get one. I believe in the flu shots. Uh, I'm, I'm the two year flu guy though. Two Every year two years, I'm going to catch a flu that no flu shot will ever protect me from. It's yeah. always happened. Uh, next year is the the flu year. Hopefully. See for me, I I don't. I will get the flu shot like every other year, but every year I get it, 
I get super sick. Like, I, yeah. I'm not one of those people who thinks the thing causes it, the vaccine. Yeah. But for whatever reason, uh, I don't know if I... I maybe maybe, maybe I have riskier time get... behavior. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm around more flu people. Oh, uh, you got the flu? Ah! Yeah, exactly. Well, I got a flu shot. <laughs> and the flu shot's like, yeah, no, I don't. Um, but I still get it sometimes because I'm like, you should. That can be, or it. it could just be that you that it, you get the shot at the time of year when it's really starting exactly. to take off, and, and maybe so I'm it's not just because more vir- more virulent before you uh, before it kicks in. DJ Ray says he's not a needle fan. I don't mind getting shots. I hate getting my blood taken though. Yeah, like I, shots don't bother me at all. I know exactly what you mean, and I I used to be the same way, but years of years of having to have my blood taken for diabetes and then all this other stuff i've just learned to look the other way put my brain in another happy place and don't even think about it if i look i squeal like a young child yeah the last time i got mine taken the doctor's office i was in had a picture of uh, you know that picture of the little baby pig in rain boots (laughs) yeah they had that on the wall that's great and i was just like (laughs) She was just like, look up there. <laughs> I was like, okay. Ber- Burble, who's asleep over on the on the bed right now, his uh, his vet has a picture of the uh, hang on cat. Oh. And that every time he gets a, a shot, I have to look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, what? I I watched a baby get its blood taken once, <laughs> and I could. It was so oh, it's so awful because they don't know what's going on. Yeah. They're just like yeah screaming and. But luckily, they won't remember it later to, to hold it against it's you. True. Well, they'll just have the trauma. Oh, sure. It. The trauma's going to mess the them up for life, but stay. they won't be able to blame you for it. <laughs> That's right. That's all that <laughs> That's matters, That's the important really. thing, right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Another uh, interesting uh, food note about Johnson City, and this is a big one. I don't know. This hasn't been around a lot as far as I know because I didn't know until a, a friend of mine told me on Facebook the other day, Ethiopian restaurant opening in Johnson City. Yes. That's going to be on Market, I want to say 800 Market, uh, mm-hmm. West Market, the the major market, not the the neighborhood uh, market, uh, East Market. But uh, I think it's around 800 West Market. That's the, the corner of Indian Ridge Road and Market Street. Yeah. And I'm excited about this. Where it is, I don't I don't know the name. A lot of people have said that, have told me uh, that there's a sign on it now. But I go by there so rarely yeah. that I, I don't even notice. It's a little bit off the road. I, I hadn't even noticed, but uh, I'm excited. They said there's going to be a buffet this weekend. So I might be going to get some Ethiopian food. Yeah, I don't know what Ethiopian food... Like, I don't even have a concept of what... Oh, I love Ethiopian food. It's... You've had Indian food. Yeah. Take those kind of Indian flavors and dial them back a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take down the boldness a little bit. And add more fresh ingredients, le- less saucy. So, when the okay. when the traditionally when I eat at an Ethiopian mm-hmm. place, I'll order. My friends will order, and a huge platter comes to the table with uh, the spongy bread on the bottom of yeah. the platter. And all of the stuff we ordered is on top of the bread. Yeah. You tear a piece of the bread off, and mm-hmm. you just reach over and you eat with your hands. Mm-hmm. That's how I'd always eaten Ethiopian food. So when my friend said that there's a buffet, I was like, hmm. This bears some investigating, so I'll put on my buffet hat. Buffet hat? <laughs> I'll be the buffet hunter. Uh, so, yeah, i gotta got to try that this week. Yeah, that sounds really good. Love me some, yeah. love me some Ethiopian food. I just, we all just love food. I do. I just love food, but especially Ethiopian. It's so rare here. Asheville had an Ethiopian dive restaurant for a long time. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it was just a little bar out in West Asheville. Uh they had a they had an Ethiopian buffet, and then yeah. there was uh, an an Ethiopian restaurant at, open in Asheville a couple of years ago now, and I still haven't taken time to go. It's it's off the beaten path, and I just haven't made it by there yet. I think I think because it was on the beaten path, you'd you'd have gone like the day it opened. Yeah, when I'm in Asheville, I'm rarely by myself, and if it was just me, yeah, I'm gonna dig out everything. But uh, my friends in Asheville tend to be a little more selective eaters. And they live in Asheville? Yeah, it's complex. It's complicated. Let's put it that way. You know, everything has to be uh, organic, non-processed, non-GMO, local, uh, expensive, or it's not any good. 
And any place that doesn't fit all of those criteria has to be bad and it has to be avoided. Boring. So, I eat a lot of really good places. Yeah, I'm sure. That's the that's the upside. But you also miss a lot of good I places. I miss out on a lot of places I'm dying to eat at. One of my favorite places in Asheville was, uh, I think it was called 151 Grill. It was a gas station. It was mm-hmm. a shell station. Half of it was a shell gas station mm-hmm. and half of it was one of the best little burger joints in <laughs> Asheville. They were open until 2, 3 a.m., which yeah. is rare in Asheville. Yeah. They close sure. early. They made the best, widest variety, best burgers. Mm-hmm. You could get beer there until until they had to stop legally serving it. And I would go, I would leave the bars. If I was down there, you know, just having a good time, I would leave the bars early just to go down there and get me <laughs> something to eat. I love the place. Mm-hmm. But, the, of course, they're building hotels in Asheville. So they uh, bought the place up, and they're turning it into a parking lot. That's the only reason they closed, is their, their landlord sold out to the, to the, to the money. And that's... Dumb. That's that's the danger. That's Asheville should be a warning sign on the hill for Johnson City. For real. Because Asheville was empty. When I was growing up in the 90s, you don't want to go to Asheville. I mean, yeah, yeah there's a porn theater down, downtown that's awesome. But other than that, it's empty storefronts. Yeah. And a couple a couple bars, tough, rough and tumble bars to mm-hmm. go see bands if you really are, feel, feel brave and really want to see this obscure band. And I did. That was my scene. Yeah. And then I couldn't believe it when it was, it was about when I started getting into Derby. That's where roller Derby was. So what, 2006, 2007, I started going back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, where did all these places come from? Well, it also helped the, the highway also helped because before, um, before it was like a two hour drive. That's true. No, you're right. And if you got stuck behind someone, you were basically that's right they finished 26 you're right that was and that was another reason i didn't go to Asheville a lot because for nothing to be there and having to drive that yeah. twisty i was a master at that road though. i drove a chevette and i didn't care if it got beat up or yeah. not so i hauled some ass up and down that little twisty road but uh the uh the, the going over there was not worth it because there was nothing to see so we yeah. all went to we all went to to uh knoxville mm-hmm. when i in the 90s that's where you'd find most places because it had it had revitalized its downtown in or the old city the old downtown into this i mean it was dance club after dance club comedy clubs clubs that you couldn't find anywhere else around here mm-hmm. it was in knoxville so that's where we always ended up and now all that stuff kind of closed and the pendulum swung and moved to a different yeah. part of town and Asheville's closer. Thank, yeah. Thanks, 26. Ding. Yeah, I never go. My brother lives in Knoxville, but I never go there. And I have other family there. But it just never occurs to me. Yeah. Like, if, if you root around, if you dig around in Knoxville, you could find a lot of great stuff, but you well, have to dig. Yeah. And it, I mean, the downtown area is nice for an afternoon. Get mm-hmm. coffee, walk around. There are a few bookstores you can go to. That is nice, but it's it never occurs to me to just go for the day because I'm like, well, I don't want to drive two hours yeah. back both ways just to go hang out downtown for three hours. And that's pretty so much that it. I go sense. to Market Square. I go to some of my favorite uh, shops up and down Kingston Pike because Kingston Pike is it. What yeah. we used to do in the 90s is we would cruise from one end of Kingston Pike to the other. There were like four arcades on Kingston yeah. Pike, and we would just stop. They were, they were each about, if you divide Kingston Pike mm-hmm. up, kingston pike up into quarters there was one every quarter and so we would just cruise up and down we play games and kick around and uh, it's not there anymore so i don't know what to do there was rocky horror was playing at the old um, terrace tap house which was on mohawk i'll never forget or mohican i'll never forget that because that was the oh, first God. theater i ever went into that was also a bar Ooh. and so it was this 1960s lobby yeah. with this big tacky light globes that hung down like a like a chandelier in the lobby it was super tacky oh. tacky or awesome oh yeah this, there's no difference i love tacky <laughs> and i fell in love with it I, somewhere i actually have photos because i went I, I grabbed somebody else's camera i didn't have a camera and took photos of it mm-hmm. and they would pour you a pitcher of beer and you walked into the theater, and it was divided up into tables, like like mm-hmm. uh, um, Blue Moon Dinner Theater yeah. is, except much larger. Yeah. And they had uh, an actual little stage, and then they had the projection screen, which was mm-hmm. big and beautiful, and you could watch good movies mm-hmm. there. 
And we got ripped in Knoxville is what we did. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's me and uh, me and buddy Chad. Uh, but back to Asheville, uh, DJ Ray in the chat room. Uh, he remembers uh, uh, Bell Share. I, th- I think he was trying to say Hell Share. <laughs> which was I, a great idea. A great idea. Poorly. Well, it's hard to say. I went a few years. I went the last few years it was yeah, open. It, it had really it degenerated. Awful. In my opinion, it, I, I didn't go the last five years of yeah. it because it was such a mob of humanity. Yeah, and the music, I remember there being a few good people. It's very sp- specialized, specific music. They would yeah. have one big headliner, and I would usually go for the headliners. I think I saw Brandy Carlisle there. Yeah. But that's the only person there that I can remember seeing. But a lot of it was a precursor of the stuff that Downtown Loves with the Americana mm-hmm. and the and the roots rock kind of stuff was was a lot of the stuff they brought and that's what I I was really into that at the time. Yeah. And I you know I go down there but parking in Asheville is bad. Oh, it's rough. Even then parking was bad, yeah. but when Bell Share came along, parking went to ludicrous. Yeah. Everyone parked illegally, you would get you would get blocked in, you get blocked out. And I just could not take the obnoxious crowds. And everybody was so drunk. There was so much vomit in the streets. You couldn't navigate. It was just bad. As if there's not enough vomit on the streets on a daily basis <laughs> in Asheville now. But, uh, yeah, also DJ Ray talks going to back to Knoxville. Of course, DJ Ray remembers Cotton Hat Joe's. Now, that was a place, even back in the early 90s, when I started going down there mm-hmm. with my buddies... Cotton Eye Joe's was a, or as he says, Cotton Eye Hose. Uh, then he corrects himself to Joe's. Oh, I didn't see him correct yeah. himself. It's behind the camera. <laughs> I was like, it was a country bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Nashville Sound at the time, even then, and so I thought I knew what a country bar was. I was in my twenties, and I I'd been to a couple bars, but Cotton Eye Joe's was next level, big city stuff. The people in there wearing their cowboy duds that were worth more than I would make in five years. Was it line dancing? Oh, yeah. It was the 90s. This is the dawn of line dancing. So, yeah. Heyday. Yeah. I learned to line dance. (laughs) Okay. I got to tell you. I got to tell you another story before I can tell you about how I learned to line dance. I learned to line dance because of the Nashville Sound, but not at the Nashville Sound. I learned to line dance in a video store. Mm Mm-hmm. In Nashville Sound here in Johnson City, it's on uh, Roan Street. Uh, you know where it's at. You either know where it's at or you don't. It's next to the, yeah. now. It is at the far end of the the Save a Lot shopping center. It's not open anymore. Though. No, it's, it's uh, it was yeah. a few things and then it finally failed. But uh, Nashville Sound was a country bar. <laughs> T.J. Ray rumors a mechanical bullet caught nine Joe's. Uh, that's a whole, that's a, another set of stories. I'm not going to get into. We got other stuff to talk about, but. Uh, uh, I went to, uh, we, we found out, because we were young, and uh, we're looking for a good time. All my friends worked in television. I was trying to get a job in television. And so I would hang out with the crowd from WJHL down here. We'd all meet at uh, uh, Gatsby's, is what it was called before it was Capone's. And uh, we had our own table, and for years, for like six, eight years, we were at this table every Friday night, hell or high water. Well, then... Someone told me that uh, Nashville Sound had free beer night on Thursdays. I was like, oh, well, that's another night of a night of party. And all right, we'll do that. Went in and we, we got there early because we didn't, weren't sure when it was. So we got there at like 7.58. I remember specifically the time. Because you had to start paying to get in at 8 for the free beer. If you got there at 7.59, you got in free. Mm-hmm. If you got in at 8, you got to pay, I think it was seven dollars yeah for all you could drink beer so we would get there before eight we would not pay a dime we would wait until free beer started at 10 o'clock that's two hours of the ladies hello ladies we get in line for the free beer we're drinking a free beer and get right back in line we drink our beer (laughs) another beer and we come back around and we get in line goodbye ladies (laughs) and uh but none of us line dance. We were we were yeah. met, we were rock and rollers. We were metalheads. We didn't want to line dance. It's lame. We're here for the ladies. The ladies and the free beer, ma'am. And uh, I'm at the Video Plaza is now a pawn shop. Mm-hmm. It's up next to La Perla. Mm-hmm. 
I was looking for a video in there one night, and the girl says, uh, so what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to Nashville Sound so I can get some uh, free beer and say hello to the ladies. And she goes, well, are you a good line dancer? I was like, well, I've never line danced. I refuse. I goes, oh, that's crap. Turns the TV, puts in a, a, a line dancing video, mm-hmm. and she and I start line dancing in the, in the uh, video store, and she taught me how to line dance. It's served me very well many times over the years. Really? Yeah, that's really a lame story now that I tell it. No, I I have n- I have never line danced, but I have done. What is it they do? Contra. I have done contra dancing. Well, contra dancing's fun. Which is like line dancing. It's, it's essentially. It's more like square dancing. Which is also like line dancing. I, I don't know. To me, they are. I think square dancing. There's a little art to square dancing because you have to have a collar for square dance. You have to have a, a little extemporaneous thought for square dance. No, because you have someone shouting out your well, orders. That's true. They're like, do this. Take your partner. Spin them around. <laughs> Bow to your partner. Bow to your own. It All always the, reminds me of the Bugs yeah. Bunny cartoon. If you have to have someone telling you how to dance, <laughs> not that hard. So your, your argument is line dancing is square dancing without the collar. Yeah. I think that's fair. And actually. contra dancing is like square dancing with the collar. <laughs> I don't. I seriously do not know the difference. No, I got it. it <laughs> actually, it's, yeah, it's like line dancing with the collar. Actually, because like everybody already knows what they're yeah. what the dance is. Contra dancing. The times I've done it, it was it. It was fun ish. Fun esque. <laughs> fun, yeah, fun esque. It was fun esque. That was me. It didn't. It didn't click for me. It didn't bring me any pleasure. It. It just seemed like a rebranding of. Square dancing. To me. Yeah, it's that's what it, that's how I see it. Uh, I did the uh, show, um, the Leaf Lake Eden Art Festival show oh, yeah. with the the fire troop. They have an entire building that is dedicated to contra dancing all weekend. I mean, from Friday no Thursday night until yeah. Sunday afternoon, nonstop contra dancing. Just one band and one caller after another. I mean, it's, it it just blew my mind. I mean, it's good. It's healthy. Yeah. Move around a lot. Yeah. But yeah, it's just not for me. It's it's um, I. I think it's I think it's like the country version of speed dating. Mm-hmm. I just think I, it's a social thing. It's a way to, it's a way to get get to meet. It's not like going to the to the free beer night and get yeah. rip roared d- drunk, ladies. <laughs> I'm sure that worked <laughs> super well. Yeah, that worked great. <laughs> Oh, we go down there with the JHL people and the CYB people and mm-hmm. the and the KBT people. That was the only time that I that that I have ever heard of the crews from all three of the local affiliates at the mm-hmm. time would come out and party together. Otherwise, total separation. Free beer brings everyone together. That's right, and I tend to bring people together that don't usually hang out. That's just That's one of those things I do. <laughs> but uh, DJ Ray says he used to clog. Clogging is also a thing. I learned, um, to, I learned to clog in fourth grade. We had no choice. My problem is, um, and I don't know if Stephen and Stephanie are watching. Um, I won't. I won't. I won't say anything more about that. But I've said this to them before: is that the problem with clogging is I actually think clogging is pretty cool. Like I'm from here, and it's just part of our. I think yeah. clogging is more part of our culture than line dancing or contra dancing or anything like that. I would totally agree with that. The problem yeah. is, the people I knew who learned clogging as kids were the most annoyingly goody two shoes right. people you could ever meet. Well, that's what Bonnie Lou and Buster were like, so that's probably before your time. It was. <laughs> I just thought I'd nod and agree. Bo- Bonnie mm-hmm. Lou and Buster, when I was a kid, uh, when I was a kid, they had local shows. Mm-hmm. They still made shows right here in town. And the last of the local shows, it had been on since the late 50s. Mm-hmm. Uh, shot right over at WJHL Studios. Bonnie Lou and Buster's uh, Hour. And uh, they were famous cloggers with the mm-hmm. Grand Ole Opry. And when they got older, they kind of retired. Well, they weren't even older. Uh, they started doing a local TV show sponsored by Martha White and... Uh, uh, something else. And just in case you don't know, Martha White is flower. A flower, Martha White. And flower. if you're not using Martha White flower, you're wrong. You're wrong. But uh, and the, see that comes from that's because of Bonnie Lou Buster. <laughs> but uh, those those two would uh, just have huge clogging dance, mm-hmm. an hour of clogging dances, country mm-hmm. singers, uh, performers, and uh, it's actually pretty amazing considering yeah. it was shot right here in town. Actually. Mm. I may be wrong because I think eventually they moved to, 
No, they. I'm sorry. They I, they started out here. They moved to Pigeon Forge, uh, where they had their own theater, the Bonnie the Lou and Buster time. Theater. That's right. And then they started doing the show out of there. Yeah. Which was cheaper for the locals, anyhow. But uh, Granny's Attic was a. This is a totally different thought, but the same subject. Granny's Attic was a junk store that was mm-hmm. down here on uh, Main Street. I was in Granny's Attic one day, and there was a great big Bonnie Lou and Buster poster. Mm-hmm. And I was, I, I told, I told the person I was with, I'm like, this is amazing, considering this is a 1964. Come down and watch it, WJHL Studios, Bonnie yeah. Lou and Buster poster, and I was like, this is awesome. Well, I said it so loud that the owner heard me. He wanted forty five dollars for that poster just because I wanted it. So. Sure. Didn't get it, but that's just one of those little things. Yeah. What if I could have had a Bonnie Lou and Buster poster right here behind us? Someday. No one has any idea what I'm talking about. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> we have. Let's look around what we're what yeah. we got going. This is got sort of a, this is sort of a surprise episode for me. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, have no idea like, what he's. Let's fixed. try something new. I've got a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm gonna just sort of spring it on you mm-hmm. and see what Bailey thinks. Uh, well, of course, the first one's the easier one. Is uh, Things Stranger is playing at the Full Moon Dinner Theater? Or, I'm sorry, Full Moon Theater. Oh. Formerly the Full Moon Dinner Theater. It's what? Now, it's now Full Moon. Full Moon. You were saying Full Moon. Oh, am I? Oh, I'm yeah. thinking of Full Moon. Full Moon Entertainment. I'm thinking of the uh, <laughs> of the horror movie brand. I'm sorry, Blue, Blue Moon. Moon. Blue Moon. You left me standing alone. I'm still a little upset. I'm sorry. It's Blue Moon, it, formerly the Blue Moon Dinner Theater, now just the Blue Moon Theater. Uh, they've reopened. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we talked about this a couple episodes ago. We did. Uh, Ed had had some uh, health issues, among other things, and he just decided it was a good time to stop. Uh, Blue Moon Dinner Theater, uh, as far as I can remember, is the longest-lasting theater that's been in that place. It was originally opened... I want to say in the early 2000s, late 90s, because mm-hmm. a good friend of mine helped open it. And it was, um, they want to do some more dangerous theater, some more local stuff. Am I keeping you awake? I don't know why I keep yawning. It's okay. <laughs> it's, this, uh, it's this body it's suit. So it's so comfy. warm and cozy. I'm just like, it is just the I'm right already in bed in my head. Right. Yeah. Sorry, continue <laughs> your story. <laughs> well, they opened it up. They, they tried to be avant-garde. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to buy avant garde, so they ended up doing Death Trap just like every everybody else, every other dinner theater. Uh, they went as long as they could, then they closed. It became Pharaoh's uh, Performance Club. Uh, I saw some great drag shows uh, in Pharaoh's, and then Ed got it and became Blue Moon Dinner Theater, and they closed. And now they're back, and the show is going to be Things Stranger, which. I love Stranger yeah. Things. Have you seen Stranger Things? No, and I'm worried because we're oh, going to see. Oh boy! We're going to see Things Stranger tomorrow. That's it. I'll have to friends. take off work tomorrow. We got to binge two seasons. No, I. It. Yeah, I, I'm worried. I won't. I hope you get the humor when the rights to the hit TV series Things Stranger, Stranger Things, are purchased by the world's biggest waffle company. Fame director Kevin Spielberg threatens to quit the show due to recasting. Meet Justin, Barb, and the real townspeople of the Dawkins, Indiana. Someone in town is murderously mad about the changes in store for season two. Find out if a jaded television director can work with the real sheriff of Dawkins, Indiana, and a crew of misfits to help them solve a murder mystery that turns out to be a strange thing indeed. Yes. Do you know about the Egos? No. Do you know about Seven? No. Do you know about the kid with no teeth? No, you'll have. You'll, I'm sure. I'll be, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll I'm just sure get rip roaring drunk before. It's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll probably get rip roaring drunk during. As, as Ooh, she, yes. you're like, what? What's that? Yeah, you're What's like. What's that? You're like. Shh, what the hell's shh, that? <laughs> this doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch a few episodes <laughs> tonight in bed. Buddy, you talk a lot like my aunt Agnes did. <laughs> that that's very interesting. What is this? What is this? What's happening? My mom, when we were kids, my brother and our kids, she had this skill, like, if we were watching TV in the living room, it wouldn't matter what it was. It could be Barney. And she had this way of walking into the room and going, what are you watching? <laughs> like, we were watching porn or something. Like, it didn't matter what it was. The voice that goes straight to the spine, bypasses right. the hearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're like, oh, God, what? Yeah, no. <laughs> that's a mom thing. Mm-hmm. They do it just to screw with you. <laughs> But yes, the thing Stranger is going to be tomorrow. I look, I, I look forward to it. I'm a big Stranger Things fan, but I haven't seen the new season. 
But this was written before the new season came out, yeah. so I think I'm good. Yeah. But uh, who knows? There're going to be some in jokes. I'll do my best to keep you up to date. I, I'll try to watch. I'll try to. <laughs> how many episodes are in the first season? Uh, I think it's only like thirteen. Is it a, a short lot. show? It is. It's, it's a very like twenty-one minutes show, or something. Show. Uh, I almost wrote things stranger. Being stranger, <laughs> Stranger Things episodes are in my head. Mm. I find out how many episodes there is. Figure out how, how fast I can binge it. Uh, season one is nine episodes. That's not bad. And there. Uh, Wait, that's season two. I'm sorry. Eight episodes. Season one is eight episodes. Well, how many? What are the? And then season two is nine more. But what? How long are they? Uh, an hour. Oh, shit. I asked if they were short. You said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, I'm not going to bother. They're like, they're like 45 minutes yeah. each, I think. Uh, there. Yeah. That uh, doesn't give the running time. Yeah. But I'm pretty, I'm almost positive that they're, they're each, each an hour or so. Um, yeah, not exactly a, a comedy. Oh, really? It's funny. But, but it's, it's a horror like a, comedy. It's my yeah. kind of comedy. Yeah. It's the uh, Dale, yeah. Tucker and Dale versus Evil kind of comedy at, at points, but yeah. not so dark. Which is a good movie. Meets, which meets E.T. comedy. There we go. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Andrew says, some podcasts have t-shirts for sale. I'm thinking you may need unicorn suits, among other things. I yeah. love it. I yeah. love it. And it'll just have a little, it'll say Bailey. Yeah. Or or it'll be like, you know those um, graphic designs people do? Yeah. They're like, um, that are like just black and white. Yeah. Could just be like here up in my unicorn suit. I like it. it, it it'll have like, like a, a balaclava kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. I could just do. So that only, only the person's eyes are like this and it looks like you looking out through your unicorn suit. See, I like perfect. it. I've got to get a badger suit. I got no merchandise. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. I got a hat. Badger suit would be cool. Of course, well, I don't know. You need your, you might need your own thing. That's true. Because we don't, I mean, we love Hello from the Magic Tavern. <laughs> I but need, uh, I, I would dress like a, like a wizard. That's what I would dress as. They should make wizard onesies. That would be awesome. I would I would already have it if there's a decent wizard onesie out there, especially if it's made out of this material. Yeah, this stuff that is That is so flush. awesome. It is so It would flush. get awkward if I just stayed here like this all night. That'd be a totally different show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, I need a, a wizard onesie. Yeah, a wizard onesie or a steampunk onesie. But since it's a wizard onesie, it would have to have like an escape hatch in the back. So if something goes wrong, I'm like, I'm out. Yeah, it just has like um um smoke bombs in the sleeves. Right. Boom. And then, you're and just then the gone. whole the whole thing just falls like that. Yeah, that would be cool. And I'm wearing <laughs> cool. a badger onesie under it. And I'm like, how'd you get here? <laughs> See, I think this through. Yeah. I finally started the second season. You said hello from Magic Tavern. Mm -hmm. Started the second season. I think bad things have happened. I'm disturbed. Bad things have happened. <laughs> You're right. Andrew says there must be somewhere on the internet. Surely, yeah. There's always... And if not, we need to start making them. That's it. That could be my thing. Let's see. Wiz oh. I mean, I sort of know how to sew. In a way. I have, of. I have cosplay friends that if they were watching now, they go, yes, I can make this. Wait a second. Wizard onesie. Uh oh, am I gonna have to go to the? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go to the other screen here. Let's go to our right monitor. We have wizards onesies. I don't know. I kind of like it. You have to. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of like it. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't look like a onesie. No. Uh, but those do. Yeah. But that's not really we I mean, I guess it's kind of wizardy. Those are pajamas with moons on them. Right. I'm sorry. Which I guess are kind of related to wizards. What, what is this? This is what I need. I don't know. But I like that one up there. Which no, one? This one? That, yeah. Oh, that one's adorable. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It looks almost like, it looks almost like uh, Twilight Sparkle from uh, uh, mm. My Little Pony. Almost. Almost. Uh, so I like my, how there's so many baby clothes. I think this is it. I think this is the this is my look. <laughs> yeah, you go for the one. <sighs> Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> Why are there so many baby things? I don't know. Do, do babies wear wizard and was onesies? Was that a pillow with Bill Murray on it? What? Go down. What's happening? <laughs> down. 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 There. Oh. No, that's not Bill Murray. Is it Bill Murray? That's Bill Murray. 
Yeah. Why is there a pillow with Bill Murray on it? I don't know. I mean, I guess with Bill Murray, you don't. There, there doesn't have to be a reason. But yeah, I don't get it. Now I did see at uh, Target they have Harry Potter uh, onesies. Oh. That yeah. looks like a Gryffindor. I'm Ravenclaw, so. Is have, Gryffindor all they have? I have issues. Yeah, I have issues with wearing a uh, Gryffindor. Just I, saying. Do they have Slytherin? No, they don't have Slytherin either. I'd wear that as like a second. I mean, Griff- Gryffindor's third. Mm-hmm. I mean, who wants to be a Hufflepuff? No one wants to be a Hufflepuff. There are a lot of Hufflepuffs out there. Every time I go to a con, there's a Hufflepuff section. What's wrong with people? But anyhow, that's a <laughs> going back to the original subject. Uh, that's Things Stranger. It's going to be playing mm-hmm. uh, for a while yet. Uh, yeah, next Saturday. Wait, actually, no. this is it. This Saturday. No, they're having. I thought they were having another show. Because I just saw a thing recently that said... Oh, okay. Maybe they just haven't updated this yet. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I could have sworn they had a thing saying they sold out so quick that they were having another weekend of Here's it. Here's their, or... their link. Well, since I'm going all over the internet here. I'm all over the internet. <laughs> oh, you're on Linda here. looks just like her mom. It uh, looks like the mom from that show. Uh, here I we go. I don't know if you wanted to... <laughs> no, it's, it's on. It's all right. Uh... We have extended our run through November 18th. Mm-hmm. You are correct. Oh, but tickets are already moving quickly. Book now. I didn't see a book now button, but I will take their word for it. And Barb, you guys can't. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change the camera. But uh, mm. if you look in front of my TV, I could go get her in the glasses. Yeah, in the glasses. That's Barb. That's my favorite character from Stranger Things. And I tell you that. I have heard about Barb. I tell you that because Barb should have had her own show, but we'll never know. Barb is goody two shoes. Can tell by uh, her earrings and her glasses. I shared a uh, a great meme the other day. It's like, in a world full of Nancys, be a Barb. Be a Barb. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll get around to watching the show. <laughs> it's a good show. Um, I grew up in the, I grew up in the eighties, so yeah. the kids in it are the age I was in nineteen eighty two. Oh yeah. So it's got it's double nostalgic for me because I'm like, oh, that's I, that's when the world made sense. This is the way things are supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what else we got? Let me see what else I can bring up. So we'll yeah, close the bl- the blue moon is done. Oh, we missed that. Yeah, it's still going on this week though. They've yeah. even got, they're even releasing stuff tonight. Uh, it's the third anniversary of our friends at uh, Johnson City Brewing Company. Best place ever. It really is. Great folks that just happen to make really good beer. Yep. Uh, tonight, that they, they unveiled six different beers tonight, I think. Dark Cherry Bourbon Stout, Pinot Noir and Fig Stout, Cabernet Sauvignon and Black Cherries, Blackberry Stout. Sorry, not Black Cherries, Black, Blackberry Stout. Grand Marinier, Orange Stout, Horchata Rum Stout, and Merlot and Chilies and Cocoa Nib Stout. I've got to admit, if I knew about this, I would have skipped the show. Tonight. I understand. I almost skipped the show, but I'm going down, uh, they're going to be closed. And I also there. see, oh, tomorrow, they're releasing a six-month yeah. aged corruption, which is my personal favorite beer Love from it. them. It's vanilla coffee bourbon porter. My so favorite. So good. It's so good. Uh, you can find out more about Sorry. that uh, on the event page right on the Johnson City Brewing Company. Uh, mm-hmm. But, I mean, this is going on right now. You know, put it on your phone. I know you want to keep us near, so put us on your phone and head down to John City Brewing and, and, and show it to Kat and say, Kat, they're talking about you, and she'll go, again. those guys again? God. I'm kidding. No, Kat's awesome. I adore Kat. But uh, what else we got? Uh, rolling the browser um. roulette. Oh, that's right, right now. If you're if you're not here, I hope you're at Hideaway. Uh Buddy John Boy passed away last mm-hmm. week, two weeks ago now. Yeah, it's it's, been uh, it's he was such a, such a nice guy. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, but if you ever ate at Main Street Pizza, odds are he helped prepare that food. And even if you didn't go to Main Street Pizza, you probably saw him downtown. Yeah, Prince, Prince of a guy. I always yeah. always got a smile talking to John Boy. And tonight they're having a special. They're calling it Tunes for John Boy. Uh, his family, his, his loved ones, his roommates. Uh, are throwing this for him. We're trying to raise a little bit of money. I'm going to go down there right after this, drop off some mm-hmm. cash, stick around. I think Poverty Bomb announced that they're going to be playing tonight. So 
Might, I've not I've not seen them. Might stick around and check it out. But that's tonight. They've got music and uh, it's probably gone by now. I'd imagine. I don't know how. Uh, but knowing Jamie, uh, Main Street Pizza was uh, providing pizza for yep, this event. A buffet, uh, at no charge. Yep. Although they're asking for a ten dollar donation. That means yep. I expect you to pay ten dollars. <laughs> Uh, just because they say it's no charge, that doesn't mean there's no charge. So right. ten bucks, and help out uh, the loved ones of uh, John Boy. And there's a yeah. such, a, such a great photo of him. I think this is what John Boy looked like when I first met him. Yeah, yeah he's such a nice guy. Yeah, and I I only I only met him properly a few months ago. Um, just very very sad. Yeah, I, n- I never had time to do much more than yeah. we'd sit down and, and chat for a little while mm-hmm. and then move move on. Yeah. Here's a little bit of news. Mm. I don't know. I don't know about this. And this is... I, I don't know if I... I have an opinion. Yep. But I don't know which side of it I fall on because I don't feel like I have full possession of all the facts. Johnson City says... The city, the town says, Hey, we are going to dedicate a Martin Luther King Boulevard. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh People are thinking it's going to be a main street. Maybe Market Street will be renamed. People are speculating part of the state of Franklin may be renamed. They go, we're going to name King Street and the new King Street Park Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Well, a lot of people, rightfully so, said King Street is a little forgettable street that has never had any real relevance since all the banks closed on it which now i just want to be clear I, which one is king street because i have a street in my head right now where the new park is with yeah. the lights it's right that's it's between king that and the um that's library a, that's commerce but yeah that's it, it the, 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 sorry commerce is where mid-city is that's yeah. king street right there between atlantic ale and the uh and the, and the library. library yes that's what i thought yeah, it's not even a, it's not even half a mile long. No, and it and it was, it has been abandoned for a really long yeah. time. It had become kind of where all of the drug dealers in town were living. I'm here. I'm not yeah. just speculating. No, no, no. I walked my dog down there back when it was at its worst before you they really, did all these. You really there. You really never had a reason to go down it. Yeah, and granted, never. they put a beautiful park on it now. Mm-hmm. Atlantic Ale House faces out onto the drainage yeah. dish, ditch. And uh, they're going to be putting a, a, a amphitheater in mm-hmm. and the libraries at the top of the hill. It's going to be beautiful, but generally when the the criticism is generally when a town names something after Reverend Martin Luther King, it's a major through fair. It's mm-hmm. it's a place of distinction and so of honor. This sort of smacks of like we want to look like we're. Right, and, and there was a lot big. of a lot of uh, accusations of just paying lip service, and that's sort of. I mean, I could get though how because that area is getting nicer, I can sort of right. get how an argument could be made that I can see it from the point of view of someone. It's like, yeah. well, this is going to be one of the most crowded, attended places mm-hmm. in downtown. This is right. this is going to be a place of honor, but. That's only looking forward. That's a marketing yeah. decision. That yeah. is not a decision uh, based in what it is, what it was, yeah. and you know. And it was manufacturing, and garages were down there. I know when I was in high school, there was a shady, shady little convenience store down there. There was also where the library is now a super dangerous. Um, was it? It was like a ho- It was a hotel. It was the Economy Inn. And my dad at the time was a. Um, he worked for the Department of Human Services. Did a house. Uh, what is it called? Were you visits? Going, yeah, he did ho- home visits stuff like that. Um, and when he had to go there, he was required to call the police to escort him, and the police would never go alone. There would always be at yeah. least two cops that went with him. Because it was so shady down there. And that whole part of town was... And my, my dad helped build the pool that was on top of the old Economy Inn. But the thing about the Economy Inn and part of its reputation... Now, keep in mind, this is a different time. This is not the, the days we live in now. In the 70s and 80s, it became... It, it got its... That was the red light district of Johnson City because homosexuality was in the closet. Mm-hmm. It was firmly 
locked away and it was dangerous to come out in East Tennessee. It was one of those things that anyone that I knew in the late eighties when I was in high school that was gay, mm-hmm. they had, they felt they had to hide it. And I'm only talking my only, my own personal knowledge of individual friends of mine. They felt they had to hide it and had to get cured and stuff like that. The only place they had, they could go and, and meet people and talk to people was right there. Mm-hmm. That whole little street was uh, quite scandalous because there would be bus and local officials would be caught there and local dignitaries would be caught there because that was it. And so a lot of that brought on a terrible connotation with the mm-hmm. authorities, which just kept dragging it down and it became full of drugs and hookers and everything else was there. Well, I have a quick question. I was kind of reading this letter because it's still on the screen. Yeah. Um, says the King Street area would have been a perfect MLK. Right. So did they decide not to do King Street? That is correct. The, the, I, I wanted to talk about what had happened before oh, I talked okay. about what has like, happened. Sorry, I. Uh, <laughs> it's was... okay. I led you down the. I led you down the path on purpose. <laughs> well, you can't, and you also can't <laughs> leave things open to read, or else right. I will. Just no, no, no. Like... It's fine. I'm, it, it, it's fine. <laughs> I'll skip ahead. <laughs> uh, totally fine. The latest decision mm-hmm. because the they the city commission listened and they thought about it and they're like okay how can we do this any renaming of a major street being their point mm-hmm. means that every business every residence on that street has to change their postal address and yeah. that is a huge undertaking that yeah. the city would probably end up investing a lot of money in yeah uh, because it would also have to be changed at the post office and on the government le- on the national level mm-hmm. So it's a big deal. Google has to be updated, for God's sakes. Uh, so what they've done is they have found a way uh, to have it uh, the stretch of uh, University Parkway from uh, right down here at, Le- uh, actually from Market Street all the way to the interstate uh, will be renamed uh, well, it'll re- retain University Parkway as its name, but mm-hmm. it will be known as the Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. So it'll be, a, it, it's a way to acknowledge and keep a designation while not changing anyone's mailing address. Whether that is appropriate, considering what people expect, I don't know. Yeah. But it seems to me that it's an economic decision. That seems so odd. I I think that's the, that's what it sounds like when people are trying to make the best of a bad situation. I, at that they, point, they dug a hole and they don't know how to get out. I was about to say at that point, I'd just be like, "Yeah, we're just going to name King Street." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like sure, yeah, and uh, again, I I don't know where I, I land on it. I mean, I can see the city yeah. not wanting to go to what they thought was an honorarium. Yeah has turned into a massive undertaking and a massive expense to give the people what they're demanding. Yeah. And this, I think, in their point of view, is looking at looking at a compromise. And maybe it's just a for now compromise. Maybe yeah. they it's, it'll buy them time to actually w- start the planning stages of renaming a, a stretch of highway, yeah. which I think is a great thing. Yeah. I, I think it's a wonderful thing. But it's... I mean, I don't know how many times I'll go to a, a, a town and someone will say, you, you take a right off of Martin Luther King Boulevard. I'm like, which city am I in? <laughs> yeah, well, I just have to really quickly go, wait, no, that's the one that was in, that was in Columbia. This is Charlotte. Now I need to go to Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. I'd, I'd like to know what other people thought. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't of know. course, after a, something deep like that, I go back and look at what DJ Ray said. They have a Chewbacca onesie. They do have a Chewbacca. It's on onesie. sale right now at Target, and I had it in my hands again yesterday. I just can't be that stereotype. Sure I'm a hairy, you can. I'm a hairy guy. I want it. Then you should, get, if you don't want to be a stereotype, you should get a duck. Oh, a duck would be awesome. I could totally duck be a duck. Would be cool. I could have all kinds of great puns. Oh wow! It's it's already, it's already. nine o'clock. I no, I was noticing that. I picked up my phone because I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey. Uh, 
the other articles. I guess we we could talk about some of this stuff in the extra. That's I mean, true. this is. I'm not going to give it away to everyone. I've seen two of these. This one, I think, is very interesting and I I think worth talking about. That Uh, one doesn't surprise me. This one, I don't know if we should talk about it because I don't want to give that person any more attention than they're getting. Uh, Sorry, this is just teasing everybody. I know. (laughs) This, I thought, Uh, was interesting. I swear, I thought they were closed. They're not. I've told you that. (laughs) I know, but I cannot catch them open. I look at their hours and I'm like, okay, this says they're open and they're not open. We're talking about Sharp's Deli. Yeah, sorry. Uh, just come back for the extra. Come we'll back go, for the extra. We'll go through we'll some more it. stuff. What else we got to talk about? Oh, well. We may get through one of the other things. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> hey, Dale Bover. But, uh, yeah, some other things. Oh, well, here's another thing I wanted to mention, though. I love this band. Mm-hmm. Tooth of Day are going to be playing uh, at in Kingsport at Holston Brewing. I'm pretty sure that's right. Holston River Brewing Company, Saturday the 14th. They are from uh, Pigeon Forge, and they're just the nicest people. I, I talked to them for a long time backstage at uh, Little Chicago Festival. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes you just click with people. Mm-hmm. And I clicked with uh, the leader of the band. And they're a family. They're, they're all related. Oh. Yeah. And uh, they're just as genuine as it gets. Uncomfortably genuine. Highly <laughs> recommend. And their Celtic, uh, their brand of Celtic rock is mm-hmm. totally their own. Uh, they, they 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 play for their ancestors. That's what their name yeah. refers to. It's a it's a it's a line from an old old Gaelic saying, mm-hmm. uh, which I knew when I had the card in my hand and was introducing. Not tonight. <laughs> but uh, thanks every, thanks for joining us, everybody. Yeah. We had a few uh, quite a few folks in the chat room tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to support the show, let me tell you how to do it. You can go to uh, patreon.com mm-hmm. slash hometown. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N, not patron, but patreon.com slash hometown. You can donate a uh, set amount every episode. So a dollar's the minimum. Mm, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Please donate to help keep Bailey awake for every show. We need to pay for coffee. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I should have made the, I should have made the caffeinated tea. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but uh, you donated you, you donated a dollar an episode. Uh, we do two episodes a week. Uh, every month they will deduct the money that you've donated. So we do two two episodes a week. If it's a month before four weeks, that's just going to be eight dollars mm-hmm. a month. Uh, it'll come to the show. It'll help us upgrade the equipment. Help us pay for the uh, audio podcast, which. Is going pretty well, I think. I mean, we're getting uh, we're getting regular listens. It's like every week, every episode is still growing, hmm. uh, and that's just individually. I don't know. We don't look at we don't look at iTunes. No, we have still never looked no, at iTunes. No, I still have not looked at iTunes. I have no we idea. Could be, we could be massive stars. Yeah. So, so uh, since I speak of it, though, even though we don't look at it. If you're listening to us on iTunes, uh, go and uh, like us, rate us, mm-hmm. uh, leave us a little blurb about how much you love the show. Uh, even if you don't like the show, let me know because we want to. Yeah. We want to. We want to. To a degree, please everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Not a people Ish. pleaser. I never yeah. have been. I want to make myself laugh and hope you like it too. But uh, like that, and uh, you can also vote for us. Uh, vote us up on SoundCloud and Stitcher and wherever you want if you're listening in thank you so much drop us a message let us know that you're listening because this is coming out of my pocket i mean mm-hmm. we, we we have some patreons it's not quite enough to cover the podcasting uh uh costs that uh i'm incurring so uh if you just let me know that you're listening i'll know that i need to keep doing it and that's all it takes we want to we want to keep you happy so that we can stay happy if you're watching this live, as always, we're going to go away for just a couple minutes. We're going to get a drink, maybe a potty break, and we will be back uh, in about... Uh, about 10 minutes. Yeah, about 10 minutes. It'll about 9 9.15. 9.15-ish. Uh, listen for the uh, opening music of the mm-hmm. uh, of the extra show, we like to call it. It's just where we talk about anything and everything. Uh, we have some stuff left over from this episode. Doesn't mean we're definitely going to talk about it, but I think some things are worth right. it. Yeah. That's a lot of talking there at the end. I really should I ra- start wrapping up about at the halfway point. I know, I know. <laughs> you just start. Yeah, and I can start drop. Oh, oh, PayPal. I left out PayPal. Oh my god. Uh, PayPal.com slash hometownjc. Mm-hmm. Ah, drop us an email. Bailey at hometownjc.com. 
Shannon at hometownjc.com. That's all I got. That's all you got. Anything else is just forgotten forever. Yep. <laughs> so until next week, uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, if you're watching this as an arch archive, uh, this will be out on uh, Tuesday. And we'll uh, be back with the extra in just a little bit. Yep.